So, my journey began right here with me on my bed, furiously trying to tag a friend of mine in a video that I'd found on Facebook. Now, this wasn't the first time where I tried to type his name and it wasn't coming up, so I actually gave him a call and I said, Hugo, listen, dude, I'm trying to tag you in this video that I found and your name is just like, it's not coming up. And he was like, well, yeah, listen, like, I've actually, I've deleted Instagram and Facebook. And I said to him, well, now why would you go and do that? I mean, <laughs> what's going on here? And he's like, well, I've just noticed that I've just been spending so much time online and it's like just making me feel there. So I was like, okay, like, yo, I'm sorry to hear that, but you know, good luck with that, dude. We ended the call and I uh, put that kind of in the back of my mind and I went back online. And, um, and that's what I did. It was the most beautiful afternoon in Cape Town and I spent most of it on my bed, on my phone, pissing into the wind. <laughs> now after about an hour and a half, I put my phone down next to me and having accomplished absolutely nothing and also feeling a bit meh, I thought to myself, hang on, Hugo might actually be onto something here. Now in my journey of trying to make sense of all of this, it all started with this guy. This is an Amazonian tribesman. And I watched a documentary about these people. They live a very, very primitive life deep in the heart of the rainforest of South America, where they basically hunt and gather for survival. And this is a spider monkey, one of their main sources of food. Now, I thought to myself, how on earth does a human being with no access to any modern day hunting gear or traps catch a spider monkey in a rainforest? It's actually quite genius. What these guys do is, using clay and mud, they create these big, heavy urns. And they fill these urns with fruits, nuts, berries, all of the monkey's favorite things to eat. And then they take these, these urns and they scatter them around the rainforest and leave them there overnight. Now what happens is, the monkey, knowing full well what is inside the urn, will make its way down from the trees reach inside and grab a handful of all, all of its favorite things. But now the catch is, the neck of this urn is just wide enough so the monkey can reach inside. But once it's grabbed a handful, its fist is too big for it to pull its hand back out and it is trapped. But now obviously you would think that a monkey, being a member of the primate family and highly, highly intelligent, would let go and untrap itself and make its way back up into the canopy. But it doesn't. It holds on. The next day, the hunters make their way back into the forest. Now the monkey, <laughs> the monkey sees the hunter coming. It knows that this is its natural predator. If it doesn't let go, it is going to die. But it holds on, up until the point where this hunter will actually walk right up to it, knock it over the head, and take it back to the village where it is eaten. Now, watching this documentary, it suddenly hit me. And I said to myself, oh my God, that is me. <laughs> I am the monkey. And it's not just me. You are also the monkey. And we do this. We know that we spend so much time on social media. We know that it is so bad for us, but we cannot help ourselves and we cannot let go. Now, I knew that I actually had to go and do some real scientific research and find out. <laughs> And go and try and find out what was actually happening, happening here. How we use social media and how it affects us and our well-being. And I also knew that I had to find another word for meh. So, I started by asking myself, what is social media really? Let's take something like Instagram. In essence, all Instagram really is, is one massive highlight reel. Streaming live and in HD, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the best of the best of people's lives. And because we are so constantly exposed to this highlight wheel, we start using it as a baseline from which we create these ridiculously unrealistic expectations of what our lives should be like. We cannot help but compare ourselves, our insecurities, and our lives to the people and the lives around us, which cause us to feel extremely inadequate and that our lives are just not as good as they could be. I watched a talk the other day by a lady called Bailey Parnell who explains social media as the economy of attention. And I love this because I have a background in finance and this really made sense to me. Now I want you to imagine something like Facebook and Instagram as a massive marketplace. Likes, comments, shares and followers 
They have become the social currency that we use to attribute value to things. And people like you and me have become the product. Now what happens is, when we put our product on the shelf in the form of a new Instagram uh, post or a Facebook update, we expect a value exchange. We expect a certain amount of the social currency for putting ourselves out there. And what we do is, we quantify the social currency and we start to use it to determine our self-worth and then we compare ourselves to everybody else. Now the problem is, is when we put something up, a new post, a new product on the shelf, and it just doesn't sell. Nobody's buying it. It makes us feel undervalued, just not good enough. To the point where we, sometimes we will actually take that product off the shelf. We will take that post down after a couple hours when it doesn't get the social attention that we were expecting. And this is what leads to that stress and that anxiety and that pressure that we are constantly putting on ourselves to do better and get more of the social currency. But what is it about the social currency that we can't get enough of? Why are we constantly chasing after it? Well, it's plain and simple in black and white. It is highly, highly addictive. And I mean it, it is actually physically addictive. Every time your phone vibrates, every new like you get on a post or new follower you get on Instagram, your body releases dopamine. Now, dopamine is the same hormone that your body releases when you have a cigarette, when you have a drink, and when you have sex. It is highly, highly addictive, and it is why we constantly want more of it and feel so down and out when you don't get enough. Now, after all of this, I was out of there. I ejected, <laughs> offline. Facebook, Instagram, gone. I was like Jason Bourne, it was crazy. <laughs> Two days later, a friend of mine messaged me and he was like, dude, you forgot my birthday. Obviously, I forgot your birthday. I don't know when your birthday is. Facebook's meant to tell me it's your birthday and then I can wish you happy birthday. I also had to explain to my group members later that day why I couldn't do any more research on the social media platforms because I was no longer allowed on them. And that reflected terribly in my peer evaluations. <laughs> so I decided, all right, let me just take a step back and rethink this. And I started by simply deleting Instagram and Facebook off my phone. And now that was, that was four months ago, and I cannot tell you the difference that it has made in my life. First of all, I've become so much more in tune with myself and happy and content with who I am as a person. I feel so much more confident, relaxed, and comfortable in my own skin. And it really just feels so good to be me again. Another thing that I've noticed is I've become so much more in tune with my friends and my family on a deeper and more meaningful level. I really do feel so much closer and more connected to everybody and it's had a huge impact on my personal relationships and the way that I interact with people around me. I have also become so much more constructive with my time now that I don't have Instagram and Facebook to constantly go to when I have, when I have nothing else to do. We have started doing such cool stuff around Cape Town. I've started exercising, I got back into my photography, and the other day, I actually read a book. <laughs> and for some weird reason, we've just started growing all these weird houseplants around our digs. It's been really, really cool. And you'd, you'd be amazed at how many hours there are in a day when you aren't spending three to four of them online. Lastly, and most important of all, I have become so much more present and mindful of the moment. You see, the problem is when we constantly have our phones and we can always access social media, we are always just trying, we're always just looking for the next best thing or trying to show the world that we are having a better time than they are instead of actually just enjoying the moments that we are in and appreciating them for what they are. When I used to go home on the weekends, we'd sit down and have dinner and I'd excuse myself from the table as soon as I was done eating, I would get back on my phone just to check what I'd missed. I can't tell you how nice it is for that urge to not be there anymore and to actually just sit down with my family and catch up about the week. So, before I finish up, there's a few things that I'd like you guys to think about. And the first is, I'd like to challenge you guys just to give this a go. Just delete your social media off your phone. And I know that going into the world of marketing, it's a big part of what we do and we will be, we will be using it a lot in the work that we'll be doing in the industry. But use it for your work. Access these platforms through your computer, and when work is finished, put your computer away, go home and spend some time with your friends, your family, and more importantly, spend some time with yourself. 
The second, and this is what we all need to go and do, is do a huge audit of the pages that we follow online. Guys, the Kardashians, Jay Alvarez, and this bikini model in Bali are not doing anything for you. <laughs> all right? If anything, it is making you feel like things should just be a little bit better. Platforms like Instagram have incredible, amazing, creative content that we can use that will add value to our lives and stuff that we can draw inspiration from that we can then use in the world that we'll be working in. Go and find those pages and follow the pages that will actually bring you some value. I also want to share a little insight that I've learned over the last four months. Following a person just because you know who they are is not an obligation. You don't have to follow every person you know. And I mean like friends as well. I've got people who I don't mind spending time with in person, but they are really shit online. And their content, I used to look at it and I'd be like, you're so irritating. And I'd, and I'd still follow them. Get rid of it. You don't need that stuff. And I promise you, they'll never know. <laughs> Lastly, like I said, I started this four months ago and I have been learning little bits every day. Please get in touch with me if you do give this a go and let me know how it goes. I'd love to compare notes to somebody. Um, if anyone has any questions about it or wants to chat more, this is where you can find me. You can drop me a WhatsApp, email. I am still on Instagram and Facebook. I just won't get back to you right away. Thank you.